Hello, I'm Shieldwall100 and welcome to my second quick critique. Uh, I've just got my uh, Night Models March releases through and uh, yes, I thought I'd uh, show them off to you a little bit. I've divided this um, video in two because there's actually quite a lot of new releases. Um, we've got quite a few for the Court of Owls, but this in this first one I'm going to just quickly go through the non-Court of Owls models, which is a bit of a mixed bag, as you can see from the, uh, the, ins the, the blister pack inserts just here but yes we've got Batman and Robin the old uh, Adam West version polka dot man from the Legends of the Dark Knight and a more standard release but uh, still fairly flexible and uh, useful all-round KG Beast model I'm gonna go into their build quality the sculpts and the bit of the rules as well and uh, yeah we'll see how it goes okay fairly new format to the video and we'll see if you like it well, where else to start but the newest version of the Batman. This uh, this game gets through quite a few versions of Batman, and uh, the Adam West one is uh, kind of like a returning ver you know character because he was actually released in metal a few years ago, um, but. They never really capitalised on that at Night Models. I guess that maybe he just didn't sell very well, or something. Maybe they didn't. Maybe the licence um, lapsed at the time, or something. I don't know. Whatever reason, they never really. They didn't really expand upon it. They, you had a one Adam West Batman, but as you can see now, this blister comes with both Adam West Batman and Burt Ward Robin. Hurrah! Uh, much more to scale, I think, this Robin than the original. <laughs> It's been so long since I've seen the show, I can't remember. But yes, uh, build quality really good. Um, next to no filling required on either of these two models. Um, a tiny little bit on Batman's leg there. You can just see the green, but I didn't, to be honest, the paint would probably have got through that. But yeah, a pretty good figure there. As you can see, he's standing on a power symbol. Hang on, I'll see if I can. Can I bring that into the light? Just about there, yeah. So yeah, that's pretty cool. And Burt Ward. Uh, really good sculpt really nice um, interestingly for some reason a lot of people commenting on his face because of the paint job on the card uh, you know on, on the on the media so just on the media release about him but uh, yeah it's a it's a face I can't see anything particularly uncanny valley about it maybe it was just the paint job they managed to do that worked out for him but you know it's certainly sculpted and it's all there uh, yeah can't see anyone having too many problems with that I mean sure as eggs is eggs uh, the, the whatever paint job I do will not have that same same um, sort of weird uh, realistic quality <laughs> that the um, the night models uh, painter managed to get because I'm not that good at painting and you know yeah uh, into the rules let's just uh, grab these guys out of the way and pop their cards down on the table so what we've got here in a nutshell is um, if you wanted to take a slightly cheaper version of the Cape Crusader as in you didn't want to eat up a lot of your points on um, one model you can take this Batman certainly and still have a Batman in your in your uh, in your crew 75 points is very reasonable for a leader um, as you can see his stat line isn't everything to write home about but you know he can hold his own but he won't be going around taking down a Bane he'll be struggling against um, Court of Owls Talons to be honest um, but yeah, yeah, but I mean, it's, lots of, it's a good little joke model as well, shark repellent bat spray, which really doesn't do an awful lot, but it's fun um, to go alongside the batlings. Uh, but interestingly, I mean, he has got some little uh, interesting uh, things. I mean, this is one of the few Batman versions of Batman with a rest. You couple that with his high movement and the back claw, he can really get places and do some annoying things to opponents. Detective is a great, you know, is a great uh, trait, which isn't um, valued nearly as much, I think. Um, Kapow there, I'm trying to remember what that one does. I think that's where it's a, yes, it's a special action. There you go. Uh, basically, uh, until, the end of this model, until the end of this activation, this model's melee attacks gain plus one to attack dice rolls and blunt three. So, yeah, I seem to remember that was on the old version as well, where if you got a critical hit um, on the metal version of Adam West Batman, he would do three points of stun damage, just like Blunt does as well. So, uh, yeah, but when plus one to hit is really useful with attack dice rolls. I mean, yeah, I mean, reinforced gloves. Millionaire gives you $400 extra funding because, let's face it, you're probably going to be buying more um, cops with uh, this version of Batman. 
uh, yes, because you've got more reputation left over, which means you can take some more guns. If you get the old quick response uh, unit out, you know, if you've still got those models from old, you can probably fill more of them. Um, veteran is a handy skill to have. I can't remember how it really synergizes with the Batman deck off the top of my head, but I'm sure there's something in there. And teamwork, these both of these models have teamwork too with each other. Um, only with each other, with these exact models from the blister pack, so he can't be uh, getting teamwork too with uh, Damien Wayne or anything like that. Just these two, but it's still it's a really useful skill, you know, really useful uh, you know skill to have if you can get it applying because we've seen it with Sugar and Spice, and they aren't even designed for close combat. These two are a bit better at it, and uh, so yes, they'll be able to capitalise on that t those extra two dice for attacking and defending. Pretty useful. But again, he's still not, you know, this, this version of Batman, you know, he doesn't have um, the bat armor, he doesn't have dodge, you know, there's really no, he doesn't even have stealth or anything like that. You, he, he, he's not particularly durable, but he's still, you know, he's still a Batman, he's still, you know, he's worth his points, I don't know. But uh, yeah, with a plus arrest, with the back claw, he's useful enough, and he's fun. If you like the old version of um, the, you know, the, the, the old series, and you want to try something new, then I can certainly see doing worse than going for him. Uh, Burt Ward Robin is kind of the same but on a lower scale. 38 reps, so really low points cost. He is your psychic allowance, so uh, bear that in mind for crew building. But yeah, his stats are really nothing to write home about. Nothing really. But they're fitting in with the, the reputation. I mean, another thing I was thinking, if I, I, I seem to remember, I seem to think that everyone just seems to play 350 point games, but if you're playing lower points value games, then these two are definitely worth a shout, rather than sinking a lot of points into a single model these are good figures to have in your collection for that sort of thing as well so you're trying to tra teach people how to play but you want to play say 200 points something like that you know these guys could come in and you'd still have enough mod points left over to take a few cops to really you know show people how the game works but still have a batman and robin in there uh, but yeah i mean backclaw again boy wonders really handy because well <laughs> it's really handy because it nullifies the handy skill exactly i didn't do that on purpose detective again for those um, suspect marker shenanigans pretty damned useful one of the boys i didn't think we'd ever see that rule on anyone apart from bird in the ba in the bane crew it basically allows this sidekick burt war to be inspired by batman which is really handy and uh, radio as well so he'll always be inspired by batman or whoever um it's mine i can't remember is that the one where people can't use can't count things as friendly enemy so hang on uh, it's mine. Emeralds cannot reveal your suspect models while the marker is in two inches of this model. Hmm. That's kind of situational. I mean, it's better if you know what sort of opponent you're playing against and whether or not their, their objective cards relate towards removing your suspect markers. But yeah, it's useful. And again, teamwork too. We talked about that before. Two more dice when Batman is, within, is in close proximity useful enough with this little guy here but yeah i mean um this for this this robin doesn't actually do anything in terms of you know he hasn't got reinforced gloves thank goodness he's got very modest stats but you know for 38 points those battlings do double doing two stun damage each is pretty useful as well you know that's he can put us quite a good bit of damage output for a 38 point model and yeah like i said um he'll be able to jet around the board and uh yeah be uh dealing with suspect markers at longer range than everyone else thanks to detective yeah um overall i think this is a pretty useful little blister you can have obviously if you've got one batman and you don't feel that you need any more then that's fine don't bother getting it it's a perfectly optional set as well but yeah this is a really 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 handy little um set to have as a as a, you know if you wanted to try something different in your uh, good guys team obviously you can bear in mind that this robin fits into the teen titans pretty well as well because in a team composed of like um, relatively high costed models 38 points gives you another model for relatively cheap um, I've seen you know I've heard people saying lots of things about it. bear in mind this guy isn't going to last particularly long this is probably the only version of Dick Grayson that doesn't have Acrobat and will ever be the only version so uh, you know he's probably not going to last that long whatever devious schemes you think you've got going with him he's uh, probably going to be the least defensible model in your entire crew so uh, bear that in mind um but yeah you know that's pretty useful but meanwhile also bat family as well you know batman and robin are both in though both in there for that particular team it's a good way of getting extra models into this into those relatively low model count crew you know teams and yeah that's all that's always worth you know 
factoring in as well so yeah yeah useful blister pack all told but i can understand if you don't want it especially if you don't play batman <laughs> then uh, you know don't play the batman crew then why would you but yeah um for that particular crew really really handy little set to have okay let's move on if there's one thing that can be said for the Legends of the Dark Knight series, it's that they're bringing through models that I've simply never heard of. Uh, Polka Dot Man, no, never heard of him. In fact, first time I ever heard of him was when uh, the very first The Suicide Squad trailer dropped, and uh, someone said, oh, it's Polka Dot Man. And it was a bloke in Polka Dots, um, which is nice. But yeah, no idea what he did or what he does, and then seeing this model come out, um, just confused me a bit more because now he's firing smarties from his hands uh, so yeah I mean taste the rainbow I guess um, yeah but looking at his uh, model is really nice really really nice I was very surprised at how smooth the actual spots themselves were uh, what you got is each arm is in, is uh, separate you've got the body with the legs so minim not that many parts the head is attached to the body so another part less to do and then you've got the the base itself which you know if I just turn it around it's easy to see you've got uh, the disc itself and a tiny little nub that fits onto the uh, the slotter base itself so really simple relatively straightforward and all the bits fit together really well they're really well marked the only bit of filling i had to do was on the base as you can see there nothing everything else slotted together really well sorry let's just show you his details yeah you can you get that real sense of his um, panicked expression sorry oh, there you go there you go oh god uh, uh, yeah, that's, what, that's, the, that's the gist I'm getting from him. Uh, yeah, but he's uh, yeah he's a solid model. Could understand if you think he was silly or dumb, uh, because he, he really is, and that's kind of the gist of the entire Legends of the Dark Knight range, to be honest. And frankly, it's a he's a he's a sidekick. No, not sidekick. He's a henchman. God, get those words right. Now he's a henchman. So uh, yeah, gets lots of play and lots of different crews. So let's go to his. Uh, stat card and have a quick look at him shall we right so yes there you go Abner Krill hmm. 44 reputation 300 henchmen as I said will work for anyone except Batman which is a makes him pretty uh, interesting figure to have you, you know gives you lots of uh, different potential combinations in your mind could be useful to your personal crew or not who knows uh, but um, well I mean his stat line is pretty unremarkable for his points cost. You're saying you're taking him instead of say two ordinary henchmen. If you're talking about one of like two faces um, henchmen, then uh, one and a half or one of Bane's henchmen. But yeah, so he's quite expensive as a henchman goes, um, and his stat line really doesn't you know stand out as anything particularly outstanding. So let's see what's. But those throwing discs um, in terms of the weapon stat line, that's pretty useful. Short range, but lots and lots of shots. People won't be dodging through all of those. Mechanical, so that strength dice is three up with a reroll. Throwing, so he can move and uh, move and shoot without losing dice. Yeah, so he can just overwhelm acrobats through weight of shots or just uh, just basically, uh, what's the word, blast furnace people away <laughs> with weight of fire. Only one blood damage each, but you know, you'll get some damage through eventually. And uh, yeah, so what have we got here in his stats? So there's a lot of things here, you know, Dot's suit is totally unique to him. Um, and kind of interesting. Auto repair means that he rolls three dice at the beginning of his turn and for every three or more he gets rid of a damage marker. Obstinate means he can make efforts when he wouldn't normally be able to So, and power armor means he can use efforts to um, prevent damage to himself. We saw that on Lincoln March to great effect against Deadshot recently and uh, yeah that means he'll be um, Basically, able to soak up a lot of damage and make efforts as well. Now, dot, dot suit, I seem to remember needing to look at in good detail. Yeah, it means he can move without looking without bother of cover. That's really useful. Uh, so, ten inches every turn. That's a lot of mobility for a henchman. There's a lot of there's a lot of crews out there who could really do with that. So, looking at you, Joker and Two Face and um, organized crime not a lot of natural mobility in your teams for going up vertical surfaces etc so uh, yeah yeah that's pretty handy um, in addition with a friendly model within eight inches of line of sight becomes target of attack this model may perform efforts to remove dice from the attack so basically he kind of gives dodge to other models around but he has to use his own 
has to use his own uh, pool of effort. So, yeah, I mean, his willpower is six, so he's not going to be efforting forever, but he can get those uh, efforts back through his auto repair and obviously the one, one per turn that he get through recovery anyway. So what I'm thinking is this guy, uh, he's really useful in theory, but, you know, you can't over-rely on him, otherwise he will run out of effort limit, even this guy. Um, you know, and once he does run out of effort limit, he is just a big floating target on a big base that everyone can see. <laughs> but uh, he's only a henchman, so that's useful. But if you put him next to a model you want to keep alive, say a psycho pirate, um, who's you know usually kind of easy to take out, um, or anyone who's like carrying an objective or something like that, someone you just want to keep alive, that he's. Uh, He's going to cause some real annoyance for your opponent, definitely. And uh, yeah, yeah, I think that's a pretty, pretty nice uh, thing. You know, nice, um, nice trait to have. Obviously, you've got to bear it. But that said, once he does run out of effort, he's yeah, a, a canny opponent will just take him out. He doesn't have his own specialized, specialized um, objective card either, so you know, he's not like he's going to be racking up any points. I think this, um, Pol I think Polka Dot Man fulfills pretty much the same niche in many crews, barring the ability to absorb damage coming other people's ways, is Killer Moth, the other guy from the Legend of the Dark Knight range. He's a henchman with extra mobility, a bit of a focus on shooting, and uh, yeah, but this guy is a little, you know, does a bit more protecting your own team, whereas Killer Moth is a bit more, I think, dynamic. He's got the radio, so he puts down suspect markers and has his own objective cards. So, you know, you can switch him out. Or you can, uh, you know, who knows what you want to do. Uh, incidentally, the polka dots on the, um, the 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 model itself are actually um, engraved into the the torso of the model, so at least you'll know where to put them. <laughs> so that's at least something. Okay, let's uh, take a look at our last model for this video. You know, I always thought KG Beast um, wasn't quite as tough as this version that Night Models uh, put out from the uh, from the comics. I mean, I first came across KG Beast in the No Man's Land arc where he was running um, what's it called, Blackgate Prison, with Lockup and the Trigger Twins, and they were pretty. They weren't. They didn't last that long. Nightwing managed to deal with them pretty easily, and it, over the course of his uh, tenure there. And uh, yeah, yeah. But um, KG Beast in that was tough and scary, but he certainly wasn't the horrific monster that I'll show you the stats for when I see, when you know you see him in a moment. That said, if you saw KG Beast's equivalent in the Tom King uh, Rebirth run of Batman, then this starts to make a little bit more sense. And this model is a monstrous piece of work he's a he's on a 40 mil base just was just so you get an idea and he's a hulking giant of a of a, of a, mon, of a model um and a pretty good one at that no filling required at all he's uh yeah as you can see so i'll just pick him up there you go good detail no filling very little problem in terms of you know, gaps or anything like that. Pretty simple as well. I mean, that's the thing with comic book characters, isn't it? They are, they're actually drawn simple because you've got to draw them a lot of times in a lot of different angles. So, yeah, it makes it makes painting the models a lot easier, trust me. Um, on a nice scenic base with a hammer and sickle, you know, smashed underneath his uh, feet. Well, at his feet. I don't think he did it himself. He's meant to be a bit of a throwback to the Cold War, is the idea. So, there you go. Um, in terms of his stat line... So having seen that model, oh, one more thing on his model, comes with an alternative gun arm as well, which makes a little bit more sense again when you see a stat card. That's a machine gun, whereas that is kind of like a cybernetic beam gun sort of thing. So yeah, and you can swap out during the course of the game. So if you really wanted to, you could magnetize them. They kind of come with magnetizable looking gaps, but homie don't play that he uh, I, I'm, I, I'm not doing that not on models I want to paint nicely I find magnets just rub the paint a little bit we're well, not you know if you use them too much so uh, yeah I'm not gonna I, I don't do that but hey I've got a spare spare cyber gun nice okay let's look at his stats KG Beast there he is uh, 95 points and $500 rep, uh, $500 for from your war gear fund as a free agent. That sort of gives you an idea as to what sort of territory we're, we're walking into. You know, this guy is... Uh, he's taking up your hush slot. <laughs> you know, he doesn't work for Batman, so he's uh, out of the bad guys. You're looking at um, a model which is meant to rival, say, you know, the real beat stick. So the Killer Crocs, the... Uh, 
the um, the King Sharks, all that sort of thing. Even like Deadshot in some of his iterations, and um, not quite Deathstroke. He's not taking up, you know, yeah, yeah. He's not taking up almost, you know, half your crew in terms of death, death in terms of Deathstroke. But he is taking up a severe lump. You're not just attacking this guy on for fun. Um, this is the sort of person if you just want to play it, if you're saying, you know what, I'm sick of taking like eight. I'm sick of taking like nine, ten models. I want to take six models tops, and I'm so I'm taking KG Beast. Uh, so yes, he, the endurance nine and willpower seven will keep him on the board for a while. The uh, five and five attack and defense is uh, indicative of a model which is rare for the hitting. Um, you want yeah, he's he's. You, you, you can't just trivially target him with weaponry. This guy um, requires some serious dice roll, die rolls to get rid of. 10 inch movement as well, pretty, it puts him, you know, he's quicker than a Solomon Grundy as well, so, uh, you know, that's, he's a pretty good, pretty good all-rounder. The machine gun and cybernetic gun stat lines, you've got to bear in mind, you can only use one of these at a time, and um, it takes him a little while to um, to swap between the two if memory serves, so yeah, I mean, they've both got the, the firearm and or beam, so they're both dangerous in their own right but uh yeah i mean those stats just look you know you can you can see for yourself that these are not these are serious weapon this is serious weaponry um so what's he got there assassin 2 handy for going cycling your deck and um getting the cards back you want configurable weapon is where he can swap his um his um, his gun arms around good aim will allow him to um is it, was that the plus one let's see yeah, he can move and fire, but he's not got that doesn't matter, sorry. Plus one he can he's a special action gives him plus one to his attack dice rolls and his shots, so that's pretty useful. Martial artist stops him from being outnumbered. Master fighter, is that the reroll? Plus one no, it's plus one to hit with melee attacks um, all the time. That's not a special action, sorry, giving you a, a, a blank screen there. That's clever of me. His um, unarmed attacks do um, stun and blood damage with retractable, retractable claws. Blur. He's only got. He's technically only one arm, so he's slightly easier to hit in close combat. But you know, you have to be brave to get in close combat with him anyway. He can't be arrested due to runaway. Uh, sturdy means that his effort limit is always going to be three. Um, he can steal. It's a, it's a stat I haven't. It's just a trait I haven't used that much. And again, veteran coming in there that means this guy just does um has a bit more play in a soldiers of fortune crew deck than you know it crew uh, than i'd ever have thought actually off the top of my head he's not taking up too many of your um otherwise you know your veteran henchman slots that way but yeah yeah a bit of a beast well he is the kg beast and um yeah he's um just a little bit more versatile than some of the actual like dedicated melee fighters such as like i said croc etc but uh, yeah he's a hefty points investment but you know a solid model to add to your range you know again if you're teaching someone <laughs> well rock this one out and uh, make them suffer I guess or give them this model and let them beat you <laughs> uh, yeah again no objective cards specific to this guy he's very much having to fit in and play around what objective cards you have in your own crew so bear that in mind for crew building anything you any models you give up might you might lose actual specified specified objective cards from your deck so it's always worth bearing that in mind um, when you know when you are building you know, you're building your, your team up but yeah yeah I don't know if this guy or polka dot man will actually end up in the suicide squad um, in terms of um, night models rules at all that's up to night models entirely polka dot man is in the new film coming out but whether it'll be this version or not I don't know KG Beast was in the uh, suicide squad animation I remember um, not that old, I can't remember what it's called, um, Assault on Arkham, there you go, he was in that briefly, but I won't give you any spoilers, but nonetheless could mean that his name could be, could be put in the Suicide Squad at some point, but again, it would take him a lot of points, so yeah. Okay, well, that's the uh, this video done for these this particular batch of releases, I'm going to do a separate video on focusing on the, the court themselves, and um, their, their little releases for this time. Um, I hope you enjoyed it, please leave me any comments or anything if you like the format if you know, anything I've missed any ideas you've got for how you know you might put these in your crews or if you just like or dislike the models themselves um, thank you very much for watching and goodbye